Demos. Jean-Philippe. Still good? Uh, yeah, should be good. Thank you. Zoltan. Anyone else? Jasmine? Uh, no, not this week. Nothing. Okay. Um, so, 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 Orchard 1, uh, we merged some full requests on Thursday. Fixing is the fixes the bug by adding the correct binding source to the list. This is fixing a bug. Um, what was it? I don't remember. But 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 we merged it, and the issue was filed and explained. So that's good. Um, this one on one ten x return URL when clicking on a content hosting into a content picker field. It was missing a return URL somewhere, and now it's added. So nothing bad, so it's good. Custom form publish button option with settings for full for button level, and I think it was reviewed by an edec. Um, publish button option with settings for button level, so you can define the text in the button and the custom font publish optionally. Um, dev branch, media library, factoring web search API, internal issue from Lambic, public issue, new um, API for the search API in the um, media library with the search button. It used to be a Bing implementation which wasn't working and now it's abstracted and there are many ways to search for images in the media library now. Good job. Good job. Three different ways to search for images. Beautiful. Questions, comments. On this one, module one, you laser and thank you, Vic. Um, orchard core, what do we have a week ago? A fix spelling, set content time during Azure blob creation. So we merged some pull requests. Um, uh, well, this one was merged by someone else, but I think we said we'll good to go, so fix the, the merge conflict and merge it. So this one, set content times during issue blob creation. The issue was that when the blob was created in the media library, the content type was not set, so uh, Azure blobs will be served without the correct content type. So now it's set when the file is created with the I content type provider, which is a service in uh, ASP.NET now. My screen is lagging. Is it the case for everyone? For me as well. Okay. Let me start to reshare, okay? Just to see if it fixes the issue. Okay, let's try again. Small improvement to image short pipeline, I think, for performance reasons. So, the, the shortcut if it's this case, like if the request doesn't start with the media path, then it doesn't matter to go further. Let's stop now. And this one, the media path, like this here, so as a, a static uh, variable. Always do a complete liquid context uh, contextualization. The idea being that some liquid, when the liquid is evaluated, it needs some services as um, available uh, contextual objects. And in some cases, we will not provide everything. So now it's the case. Everywhere, all the services that we provide for liquid template are always available. And and it required also. Uh, change on the metadata to be async. 
Um, that um, this one is a branch which is the admin manual permission. This one is, the, is another branch which is which is core three zero update to preview eight, um, which means preview seven as or should be released very soon. Did it get released already or not? Because preview 8 uh, versions might be available because it has been branched, but maybe preview 7 is not yet public. Um, let's see. So to be sure, dot the node. All the nodes, where is all the nodes? No, apparently not yet a public, not, not a public version of um, preview seven yet. And where are all the nodes? Okay, here. Three zero preview six. So it should be soon then. Okay. Um, just a reminder, as preview seven is available, we might, um, we will be able to use it officially on the dev branch because it will be a go live version. So supported and without breaking changes in the next versions. Okay. Until the RTM of 3.0. Main advantage of 3.0 being the birth, which is much faster than 2.2. I here, so that is this branch. Um, Jasma apparently is working on the Lucene um, Elasticsearch querying. He's also working on a web pack with React of module reloading. OMG. Super edit. What is that? What are you doing? <laughs> Super edit. Ah, oh, it's just a demo module. I can't change the name, but it's just a module for testing uh, the features. Okay. So going back on the dev branch. This one then added grouping of widgets to their side player. This is for GraphQL. And also, it's fixing how the sync method was used internally. That there was an issue. Uh, the new VS config file, so that when you open VS 2019, all the required um, extensions uh, will be installed automatically. Has anyone updated to dev and opened um, VS 2019 and seen some things installing? And startup, or is it just no? Everything. Yeah, I saw something. That's bad then. Something. Then we need to know what. Mm, I'm not sure. Because then it should not be in the list. Because if you see something being installed and you didn't need it before, then it's not needed by Orchard uh, Core, so it should not be in this list. So we need to know. I haven't tried, so I don't know. But for instance, I assume we don't need F sharp. I assume, well, or maybe there is a transient dependency that needs it. But I would not think that we need F sharp, like we don't need SQL stuff, like we don't need I don't know, web deploy or SPNet 4.5, all these things. So maybe it could be even smaller. We need to know. Um, add path. Path base, so some path base were not defined correctly, meaning the, the tenant prefix was not assigned correctly to the path base property of the HTTP request. So this is fixed. Uh, improve content type query resource builder. This is for GraphQL. Apparently, um, Carl loved it, so this must be good. I didn't really get what it was doing, but Carl liked it. 
under the unit test. Or it, it's to be able to do where queries in more locations than the one we used to have. Updating permissions. So it's just making it more standard for localizing content. Um, merge this pull request from Hisham, localize setup screen. So now you can define the, the valid cultures for the setup screen with a site setting, well, with an app setting like this. Okay, you don't need to have the site setup and uh, database settings to define what are the supported cultures, it's just in the settings of the site. And then in the setup screen, um, well, then the setup screen will use whatever culture is required by the, requested by the browser uh, based on the accepted. Um, Antoine, do you intend to use it on try launcher.net? Yes, and it, uh, maybe I will try to add the chart project dot uh, fr first. Mm -hmm. Try dot orchard project dot fr. <coughs> the French one. And yes. So what's mm -hmm. the UI? Oh, sorry, try dot orchard core dot fr. His module, well, his branch. Uh, this is currently the same than our chart called .net, but just with the uh, uh, translation. Okay. So yes, so yes, ideally on Orchard Project .net, users will have will see the language. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the setup module we have. It is your own module. Yeah. So yeah. So this should because yes. So it's a, it's a tenant here. There is yeah. already a tenant. So this is independent from Isham's PR. Okay. Yeah. I see what you mean. So idea in, in theory, we should already be able to test it this this way if we had the language. And also add it as a supported language in the settings. It has nothing. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. in this case, we don't have a tenant yet. In this case, we have a tenant. So in this case, we can just configure the culture, the supported cultures for the default tenant. And that will work. Uh, but then the user receive an email and he oh. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, and then on the new website, yeah, but you don't even see the setup screen on the new website. So this is completely independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, content culture picker. Content culture picker. Yes. Uh, do you have a demo today also, Jean Philippe, for that? Do you want to show it? Uh, so con content picker, uh, culture picker being a way to um, render a drop down or anything that can let the user pick the culture he wants to see on the website, on the front end. ASP append version support, which is a standard um, tag helper attribute that is supported now in the resource manager so that the resource manager will be able to generate the version of the resource script uh, with the URL. So if you change the version of the resource script, then it will update itself or it will refresh itself. And also a new CDN based URL so that you can define what's the um, domain or the base URL for all the, the scripts coming from the resource manager that will let you, for instance, um, cache them on a CDN. So that's very good. And that's it. So now demos. Demos uh, by 
time required, I will say Zoltan first because Jean-Phi might have two demos. Zoltan? Sure. Uh, mine will be pretty short, I think. Uh, just a sec. Let me let me switch screens. And so let me try to share my screen. Okay. Tell me, please, if you can see it. Yes, we, I see it. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, what I would like to tell you about is an update that we had to the training demo module. Um, we already added uh, quite a lot of Orchard Core uh, tutorials here, uh, but now there are a lot more. Uh, so, if you are not familiar with this, uh, this is an Orchard module, um, a, a standard Orchard module, so it's actually uh, working. Uh, you can also play with it. And uh, previously it was an Orchard Vandotex uh, version, and now there is an Orchard Core version. And this thing it guides you through um, becoming, becoming an Orchard developer. So it's really a step-by-step -step guide with a lot of uh, commented um, and otherwise documented code uh, that guides you through, through creating your first Orchard uh, controller, uh, first Orchard shape, uh, content part, etc., etc., etc. And uh, what we have now here uh, as an update is uh, well, uh, we also have training sections now. And so the whole module's uh, thematics was now uh, is now uh, divided into sections, and so it's easier to access. And actually, this is what was already there. Um, the yeah. The, the basics of orchard development, uh, including uh, display management and content parts and related stuff. Here, uh, all the way to resource management, static resource management, and now we have everything else here. Um, these are actually linking to the sections in the code. So, for example, uh, when talking about permissions, um, this is where everything starts with a controller. And here we first see, for example, how to use the authorizer uh, authorization service, and then uh, we step over to having some uh, custom permissions as well. So this is how the, the whole module is built up. Um, and apart from permissions and authorizations, uh, authorization, we have added a few other topics as well, as we explain how admin menus work and navigation providers in general, uh, site settings, uh, filters, as you're we talking about. Um, it's a standard ASP, ASP.NET Core filters here. And uh, caching. So again, uh, starting with, with the standard, um, yeah, it's not here, and uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, complicated to go there, but starting with uh, a standard memory cache um, and uh, uh, showcasing Orchard's dynamic cache and tech cache as well. Uh, file management, background tasks, and we also have a um, completely new thing here, um, um, a little sample of writing a Vue.js application. Now, this is uh, this is a question that we see a lot, and we actually also get a lot, is, uh, okay, but can I uh, create a single page application in Orchard? Uh, the answer is obviously yes, um, but this is a concrete sample on how to do it um, in Vue.js. Now, of course, there are uh, not huge surprises here, uh, but still, uh, this shows you how to create a little single-page application. Uh, basically, these are the these are the news, and there is one thing more, uh, which is um, I think especially useful for newcomers uh, who this this uh, module is targeted at, is that we also now have a recipe, a setup recipe included. So if you select this setup recipe when setting up your site, then it will configure everything uh, needed to uh, to actually try this demo module on the on the front end and on the admin to see how everything looks from the from the UI. So that's it. Uh, if you know a newcomer to Orchard, I encourage you to link this um, because yeah, our team. Um, old Orchard Vandaltex developers and new developers who haven't even seen Orchard Vandaltex are learning with this as well. And by the way, Mark has done it. 
still, uh, who is on the call as well. Um, last time, we, the first time we saw that, I think we asked Mark to create a PR on the documentation to link to it. Uh, you mean a link from uh, C -sharp to another C -sharp file? No, no, from the Orchard project documentation file, uh, site, the uh, docs. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's done. It's there. Done? Okay, let me check then. Docs. Yeah, I think it, it should be somewhere here. Um, can we add ah, Here it is. Getting started. Okay, good. Getting started. Ah. Mm. Would you have more visibility if you had a link on the left side in the guides? You see where we have index creating modular, blah, 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 or um, mm -hmm. something like, um, I don't know, getting started, uh, or a, a section called uh, development training or something like that because here it's in the four bullet points four items bullet points and maybe some people don't see it because i see lots of questions on the forums that would be answered by by your site so maybe the people didn't see this thing try mm -hmm. to find yeah. something yeah, that's a good idea uh, i will look into this and, and check out where it can yeah. be tabulating still. Because it's not in CMS modules or the other section, but in the guides or or maybe in the getting started section, having a, a link to that. Or a link or an internal link to the documentation explaining what it is, the same way you have in the readme, and that points to the GitHub. Mm. Find, find, a, find a place, find a spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will check out the test. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, because I right, uh, was there. I forgot. So, <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot, Mark and Sultan. Um, Jean Philippe, your turn. It's your turns. We oui. uh, do this. Uh, did it work? Not yet. Almost. So I can see. And I can see too. Okay. Everyone's good. Okay. So do you want me to go from the start um, to like let's, let's, run? let's start from the end. From the end? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I actually I have like three demo in one. I don't know if that's too much. No, uh, it's just about time. You have half an hour. <laughs> okay, um, so I worked on three different uh, PRs. Uh, the content culture picker, which is just a list of the culture for your site. And when you switch on a content item that has a translation, it will automatically redirect to that translation. Uh, Jean Thierry helped me with that one for caching and you know just architecture. Um, the other thing I want to show today is the localized content picker field. I'm not sure this is actually required, but uh, it's basically the same as a content picker. Um, but instead of storing the content item ID, I store the localization set so that uh, you can you can get the the one for the right culture. So let's say your parent, uh, your child. Uh, content type is not I will, look I will rephrase it. Instead of storing yes. a content item ID, you are storing, well, instead of storing a culture agnostic content item, you are storing yeah. a content item, a specific culture, a specific culture version of a content item. Um, well, I'm storing the localization set right now. And, I don't know if that's... And, and the culture. I think so, yes. Uh, no, not the culture. No, so, so maybe was, we're, it's a different thing. Oh, that's the opposite. Instead of storing <laughs> the content item ID, which has a culture, you are storing yes. the localization set, which, which is culture agnostic. Okay. Yes. That's the so, it, so my use case was that I have a team 
and the team participate in a hackathon. The team is not localized. Uh, it doesn't have the localization part, but the hackathon does. So when I go on the team page, I want to be able to, depending on the culture of the, the thread, get the right hackathon, get the right title on the right language. So that was the use case I was going for. Uh, I don't know if there's another way, but I did it this way. Uh, so these two, are, it's just uh, showing one of the uh, content items that match the localization set. Um, but yeah, so in the back, I actually store uh, an array of localization set, which is, like you said, culture agnostic. Um, the third thing that I want to show today is that I worked on a blog localization. So let's say you attach um, localization part to the blog uh, and the blog post. So the blog has a localization part. The blog post also has a localization part. It will automatically um, assign. So when you create a post, it will automatically assign to the blog of the right culture. Um, and same thing, vice versa. So let's say you create the blog first in English and you create a blog post in French and English under that blog. If you go and translate the blog to French, it will reassign all the uh, the blog posts to the French one that were under the English blog post. Uh, the English blog, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'll show a demo in a second. I don't know a few weeks case. ago, right? Uh, yes, that's, I think so. That we needed to, end, to add handlers to the Yeah, that's content. exactly what I did. Okay. And when you mentioned blog, I will uh, correct you by saying it's actually lists, any list, blog being. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, okay, so let's go. I'll start with uh, showing the content culture picker. Um, so if I, this bar is in the way. No. Um, yeah, so, okay, I don't have a French version of this. So I will go and go into this post. Yeah, that's a bit bad UX there, sorry. <laughs> I guess I should override the shape in the blog team to make it look better. Uh, okay, so this post is currently in English and I don't have a French version, so it just stays in the English version. I don't know if that's the right behavior, um, but uh, if I go and translate this blog post, hopefully this worked. It worked uh, last time I checked uh, this one. So I go and I add the French version. Did it set the cookie also? Uh, I think in this branch, I don't know. I mer like I did a bunch of PR. Uh, they're not merged yet, but I think I merged them all in my demo branch for today. Um, okay, so I just clicked on localization. So I'm localizing this post. It created it, so I'm just going to leave FR. Yeah, I'm going to leave this. Oh, just now I'm here. I'm just, okay, so I'm going to try to switch to French, and it goes to the French version of that post. Um, so, and if you look at the source, a view source, just to see what's the culture of the HTML FR. tag or the body tag. Okay, so you set the current culture to that because of the yep. culture provider. Okay. So this is yeah. So it's a culture provider. It's not a cookie at the moment. Okay. Right. And so because it's defined by the current content item, which is a different feature. Yes. Uh, so if you go directly to this page, your your thread culture will be set to the culture of yeah. the content item. So because it's not clear, I know because we, we talked about it at other meetings and triage. Um, yep. In theory, when you go to a content item which is in French, the language of the current HTTP request and the language attribute is not French doesn't have to be French. To make it French, there is a custom feature which is separate from that, that will detect the current content item and set the HTTP context culture to French, to the current content item. Yeah, these are two different features. 
the picker yeah. and the fact that the current culture is the same as the current contact temp are two different features. Okay, so maybe we can split it. Because right now, when you enable the content culture picker, it enabled that provider. Well, I think we, we said that. Maybe we change our mind, but I think that's what we said. We should have a different feature for that. Okay, uh, we can definitely change that. Unless you tell me that I, tell, I told you you put it, and then I'm fine with that. But, but, <laughs> well, uh, the last um, time we talked about it, it was, it was, I think it was clear what we had to do. So. Yeah. Because there's also the cookie. I think we talk about the cookie. Yeah, and by default, it's it was optional yeah. to set the cookie. So I don't know. Um, oh, I said it was optional to set the cookie? Okay, maybe that's the, the thing then. Maybe that's the feature that I said it was, that was optional. Um, yeah, maybe that's, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, we, can, uh, we can figure out all the detail later. Um, but so, yeah, so this is the content culture picker. Um, also, I'm going to hope the other feature that I tested uh, yesterday works, but uh, I just translated this blog post and technically, ah, see, it didn't work. Oh no, because I don't have the French blog. That's okay. Okay. Um, so this blog has a content uh, localize, uh, localization part, mm -hmm. but I don't have the French blog, so it attached the post to the, the English blog. So now I'm just going to do this and going to localize the blog. Oops, I pressed something. Um, okay. Uh, so now if I go back here, you see? So this is the English blog and you see the French post is gone because I translated the blog. I, I have a handler that for both the list and the contained parts. Um, so when you translate the, the contained items first, uh, so it, they will be attached to the wrong, uh, well, the wrong, the blog that they were created for. But if you then go and translate the list, it will reassign those uh, items to the, uh, the right culture. So you see, I have the FR blog. If I go see it, the, the French is there. So if everything worked correctly, if I go to the blog and I switch to French, we should see that the post here. There you go. So yeah, that's the list uh, handling of localization. Uh, it's not perfect, but I wasn't exactly sure what uh, all the use case were. Um, yeah, so one bug that I found, or annoyance, is that when you're in the French blog and you create a blog post, it will go to English because that's the default culture. So maybe we should have some, like, put something in, in the yeah. URL so that we can get the, create the post in the French first. I don't know. But anyway, or, even if we, go ahead. Or, um... Oh, let me think. You're creating a blog post and there is a list part. So what you can do is the list part. Yeah, there might be a way, but the list knows about it. So the list might be able to send it. Maybe. Um, so when you click this button, but that ties the two modules or the two templates together. I wasn't sure how to do it. I want, I want to talk to you, but the, the only thing it does right now is that if you're in the French blog. Yeah, maybe we can just have a convention that for the content item editor controller. Yeah. Use a custom query string and then anything can. That could work. Set it, yeah. Um, that yeah, but or, yeah, or request element. Yeah, we, we can do that. We, yeah, we can. Okay, I still attach it to the right one. So even though you're in the French blog and you click create and you create the English post, the po the English post is actually attached to the English blog. So I, 
that's how I fix it right now. I know it's not perfect, but um, uh, whoops. That's I'm more concerned. I don't know, it's not a concern, but it's weird in altered way, in an altered way to to move the French posts to the French blog. Just yeah. because you created the French blog. It's like, hey, why did you move my stuff? I didn't ask you to move them to the new one. Why do you do that? I would yeah. maybe maybe it would have been as good to just well, it's more work, but to be able to select an item from a list and move it to another list. So you could have said, okay, now let's pick up the French one, click move, and then pick the French block to move them. And by the way, you would have provided a way to move items between lists. Okay. Yeah, that might be so useful. It's, it's good what you did. I think it yeah. makes sense. But it's not very orchardy. Like, I would have, I would, it's too automatic. <laughs> So maybe people will dislike it, but as long as it's for localization, that makes sense. If it was something else, I w I would have said no. But here it's fine. Uh, okay. It doesn't prevent you from if you have, if you have time at some point or if anyone has time to do that to provide a feature to move items from lists between lists because it will yeah. be required. Whatever localization or not, we'll have to move an item from one list to the other. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, we just we should just find an issue for that, at least. I know uh, um, Dean has made some uh, reordering of the list items. Maybe we also need the uh, moving list items between lists. I think we also need uh, multiple lists. Anyway, that was one of my use cases. What is multiple lists? Uh, so the list, uh, what was it again? And to be able to attach multiple list parts, like just like the bag, you know, you can have the name part. I think it's called. No, it's different than use a bag. But I want the content item to be separate. I see. You want a, a list part to be able to attach a list. At, okay, I see. Now, okay, I see. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that was another another little feature. Um, well, then the, I told you use content picker field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we end up doing. Well, we use, we're using my uh, localized content picker that I'm going to okay. show in, in a second. Um, so, was it, uh, does anyone have a question about what I show before I switch to the last one? Um, so I'm going to go and demo the last uh, thing that I wanted to demo is the localized content picker field. Um, so we have, I attached uh, the field to um, the article. So I just added the field here. And I think I made it target blog post. Yeah. So this will store... Uh, so the article does not have a localization part, but the blog post does. So from the article, you can target a localized version of the post. And based on your thread culture, it will, on the article, it will display, uh, well, you have to write it in your template, but it could display the, the one from the right locale, uh, the right line translation. Um, so here we go. Uh, if I go to the content item article, yeah, so I already selected two, but now, yeah, we have three posts. So I'm going to go and select a couple. Uh, the ordering doesn't work right now. I, I'm going to fix it. So you can't reorder them. But if you publish this and then navigate to the about page, this work. Oh, here they are. Uh, this is the English one. I hope that this. Ah, I switched to the French block. 
where was I? Yeah, about to. I've... Oh yeah. So now it's still French. Yeah, there we go. French. Uh, Who's the home page? Hmm. Anyway, um, so in my liquid template, what I did is that I got the localization set and I pass it to a liquid filter that I created. And then just for each of the item, I display the display text in a, in a paragraph, just for an example. Um, so that's what you see here. Um, yeah. I wonder if I use the, is it culture equals FRCL? Yeah, you see this one. Yeah, so like I'm assuming the second blog post is not translated. That's why it's not showing up on the French. Um, I hope that's the case. I think so, actually. If I go here and French blog. Yeah, so the second post, since it was not translated, it won't be displayed. And since the we couldn't find the, the content item for the French locale. And uh, that's uh, that's it, I think. Uh, do you have any question or comment? Good, good. Um, oh yes, I had a request for localization. We are still missing a very important feature. You did everything that that are about localization in Orchard Core, so I'm very grateful. But it's still missing one thing. Okay. The fields synchronization. I know. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a little busy at work right now to actually tackle that one, but okay. it's on my radar uh, in the coming months. Okay. We won't ship uh, uh, the version without that. That's very necessary. So, but I yeah. have no pressure. Just just to remind everyone that we need that. We don't have it right now, and it's very necessary. Yeah, because uh, for the site I'm building right now, I'm assuming that people will go and sync the fields. <laughs> yeah. Because if if yeah. one locale doesn't have the the same number, it's it's not going to work properly. Yeah, we need that. But it's uh, not that complex. We'll see. I'm coming back from vacation at some point. So. Okay. <laughs> um, what else do we want? I didn't test taxonomy actually with the uh, oh, localization. Uh, we'll see. Like, I started reading that thread that you... Uh, you did the, the list about handlers, so taxonomy should be the same kind of things to do. Okay. Yeah, that was fairly simple once I understood. At least uh, with the fields, you know, when we select the field and then we translate it, we should look for a translation of the taxonomy content item and find the correct one, something like that. Okay. You see. Hmm. Um, yeah, so... Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. So Where is your website now? Uh, my my <laughs> website is oh, still in development. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, we didn't do the front end yet, so it's it's kind of ugly, but it's work in progress. <laughs> it's a it's, it should be week. online sometime in September, it's, is the goal. Okay. Right. Thank you. I went back here. Yeah, now it's there. Okay. okay. It works. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, yes. Go. Comments. Did I miss anything important? New sites, announcements, nothing. Okay, good. I, I made a bunch of small PR uh, if you want to okay. look at them and merge them. <laughs> Seriously? If, okay. um, if you want to merge stuff, 
and like people like Jasmine Antoine, uh, Jean Thierry are okay with that. Just merge them. If they are reviewed and they work and it's ultra D enough, just don't wait for me. I trust okay. you. I put the, the burden on these guys. They wait. <laughs> <laughs> And don't hesitate with the simple ones, like the typos, the bug fixes, if they look good. As long as you have two reviewers that say it's okay, I mean, let's merge. Okay. Okay, just ping them, tell them, hey, review that. Ask Antoine, Jospin, and Chantieri, or other people that know the source code to, to say if it's, if it's, if it makes sense, and then if it's good code, and then just merge it, don't wait for me. Otherwise, wait for Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's me. What a yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking about um, Lucene and uh, localization too. So maybe there's a part there that needs to be done too. I think Should... isn't there something already like the localization part? The localization set should be stored already with the content item. Yes, but if you're sure. find an issue and assign it to RC P two or three, because yes, we need to store the localization set and the culture for each content item. I remember that in the old one we were um, separating the, at least having an option to separate the cultures per index, which yeah, we don't makes need that. yeah, if we don't need that. Made sense to me, but yeah, depends if you have a lot of if kinds of items. Nah, I don't think it should be there because the indexing itself will not know about the culture. Maybe it was different than actual one, but here, no, I think it's fine. We can always apply a filter, a brand filter on the current culture with the culture field. So that should work. It should not be. Honestly, I don't think in terms of profit to be an issue. Yeah, maybe Even it's if better you, if, to have it. If you have 1 million content items, which is huge, and then you have 1 million content items, which is localized in another language, that won't matter a lot. Because okay, so. you just add a, a filter on the culture field with FR or whatever, and it will be super fast because it's just a simple string it in Lucene could be super fast. Yeah. So yeah, it's supposed to be faster. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about. Yeah, that. it makes in, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. One simple <laughs> index with, with just filters to. And uh, it, allows, it allows you to also do cross cultural searches then, instead of having to do two different queries on two different indices. So I think we should keep it this way. But we need to ensure that we have the correct fields in the in the index for sure. Localization yeah. And yeah. I'll take a look to see if the localization okay. set is in there. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, unless, unless it matters about the analyzers, and that would be a reason to have that because we might want to use different localizer based on the culture. Um, yeah, I'll and if the analyzer is at the index level, then it's an issue. I think we should. Uh, I think we we have the ability to apply different filters on the fly uh, with losing uh, an elastic yeah, search. But yeah, between. this is what I was sending you the last time, um, so that you can um, analyze your your. Um, your queries directly, differently from from one filter <laughs> to another, which is strange, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, that might be an issue actually. Okay, fine issue because we need to talk about it. Okay. And mention the analyzer thing. If we want to set it at the index level, then an index should have one culture. I need to look at the documentation to uh, figure out things uh, with uh, Elasticsearch DSL too. So I have some work okay. to to do. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, okay, good. So thanks everyone.
see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>